Oh, yep, now we do. All right. Well, first of all, um, I want to say welcome everybody to our general meeting for November. Um, I want to start off with um, acknowledging the month of November. So uh, the month of November is being acknowledged and recognized as Native American Heritage Month. And so um, I want to introduce myself in my tribal language, um, just in honor of that and of where the people that I come from. And so, Nawa kwa hat hats o em toya, goigu ma sape chawi na Oklahoma em da, Kimberly Denko Begay a Khan. So, welcome um, to our AIA general meeting. Um, I just, uh, that's in my traditional Kiowa language. I am of the Kiowa, Caddo, and Pawnee Nations of Oklahoma. And I currently work at um, Amphitheater Public Schools in Tucson, Arizona. And um, I'm the coordinator for the Native American Education Program here. And I currently sit as the president for the AIEA organization. And so we're going to do a quick introduction of everybody on the call. And so Jerry, if you could just go down the participants list and allow everybody um, some time to introduce themselves. Um, okay, um, I'll start off first. So, um, hello everyone, my name is Jerry Thomas. I'm Navajo and uh, I serve as the AIEA uh, secretary. Also, I am the Healthy Native Youth Specialist at the Intertribal Council of Arizona in Phoenix. And I'm going to pass it off to Esther. Hi, good morning. My name is Esther Nystrom. Uh, I am the Vice President for Arizona Indian Education Association and also the Program Specialist for Mesa Public Schools Native American Education Program. So thank you everyone for joining us. It's nice to see you all. Thank you. Next, we have Marty Lindsay. Marty, are you there? Okay, we will move along. Next, we have uh, Connie Lira Savinta. Sorry, I can't pronounce your last name. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a long one. <laughs> but hi, everyone. My name is Connie, and I am with the new program at with a new Title V grant at the University of Arizona called Pro Project Outreach Familia. And so I'm just here to see how we can integrate um, some of your knowledge um, into our grant when delivering to our underrepresented um, students. Jerry, if we could let the um, executive officers also introduce themselves. Okay, um, we have Travis next up. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see everyone's faces. I'm Travis Lane, I'm the Assistant Director for Intertribal Council of Arizona, and I'm treasurer for the Arizona Indian Education Association. I'm Navajo and Southern Ute, a member of the Navajo Nation. Glad everyone was, is able to join us this morning. Thank you, Travis. Next up, we have Lenan Yazi. Hi, Yate. Hello, everybody. I'm Shay Lenan Yazi, and she is the National Domain Deskis New Bashes Chain. I am the Native American Specialist for the Phoenix Union High School District, and I'm currently serving as the um, Co Secretary Communications, um, I guess, person for AIEA. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And then next up, we have Paul Fulginity. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see everyone. Uh, Paul Fulginetti with the dropout program from Career Success Schools. We're statewide and we support uh, many of the rural and reservation areas as well as urban uh, folks try and get back in high school or earn their high school diploma. It's good to see everyone. Looking forward to the meeting. Thank you, Paul. And then next we have Marty Lindsay. Can 
Okay, we'll just move on next. Um, we have the uh, education coordinator. <laughs> Hello, my name is Winnie Ortega. I'm the education coordinator for the Cocopa Indian tribe. Great, thank you. And then next up, we have Jerry. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Jerry Curley, and I'm with the K-12 Student Advisors with the uh, Gila River Indian Community. And I just have one of my students that's being recognized today, so I'm just on board for that. I'm Navajo and uh, Yate. Um, my clans are Jose Ishin, and um, that's about uh, who I am. Thanks. Great, thank you. And then next we have Alex. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Alex Benavides. I work with Marty Lindsay at the Southwest Environmental Health Sciences Center at the University of Arizona. Um, and I'm a program coordinator for a student's journey, uh, working with uh, Donna Otham Community College students and it's a University of Arizona readiness program. So glad to be part of the meeting today. Thank you for being here. Um, next up, we have Margaret. Okay, we will move along next to Agnes Atticai. Hello, good morning, everybody. My name is Agnes Atticai, and I am the Director of Health and Disparities Outreach, Prevention and Education with uh, Melanina Zuckerman College of Public Health at the University of Arizona. And I also work with the American Indian Research Center for Health, recruiting students into the health professions at the U of A. I am Navajo, Dinenisha, Nakai, Dinenisha, Tutso, Nibashishin, Tachi, Nidasha, Che, Aro, Tabaha, Dashinala, Basin, Nabde, Nasha. So, uh, welcome everybody. Good to see some smiling faces. Good to see Kimberly. Kimberly. Thank you, Agnes. Next, we have Julian Wong. Good morning, everyone. My name is Julian Wan. Um, I'm Thon Otham, and I'm a coordinator here at the University of Arizona for our Masculinities in the Mix initiative. Um, so really doing retention work, um, our work to increase retention for our male identifying students of color. Um, apologies, I can't stay for the whole meeting because we're doing virtual interviews here, but I definitely wanted to get a glimpse of all of the great work you all are doing. So thank you. No worries. Thank you for joining us. Uh, next, we have Tashina. Good morning, everybody. My name is Tashina Machine, and I am the Outreach Coordinator for in Arizona Indians into Medicine. Um, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have an iPhone. Or we do have um, two phone numbers. One is a 928-278-8584. Hi, my name is Robert Kiwis. I'm a Native American student advisor for the Phoenix Student High School District. And I was just joining the meeting to get some information. Great, thank you for joining. Um, is there anyone else on the line that would like to introduce themselves that already has not? Okay, hearing none, I think we can move on. All right, I see that some of them um, had to take some phone calls, but again, we welcome you to our general meeting for the Arizona Indian Education Association today. Um, we're going to go ahead and move forward in the agenda. So next slide, please. This is the agenda if um, you weren't able to um, receive it just yet. 
This is to give you an idea of what we're going to be going over today. And um, today is actually a special meeting for us. Um, we're going to do a special recognition of all of our um, student scholarship recipients today for the um, that we provided scholarships to for this year, this academic year. So I'm really looking forward to that and uh, thank everybody for joining us for this special meeting. So um, we'll move on to approval of minutes. And again, um, that was put in the chat box. If everybody could take a few minutes to review those and I'll give you probably at least two minutes to look over that. And then if anybody could, um, any of the members, I call for a motion uh, to approve them and we'll move on from there. Good morning, this is Esther. I call for a motion to approve October 16 minutes. Okay, thank you, Esther. Motion on the floor to approve the October minutes. Is there a second? Hi, this is Lynn Ann, I second. Okay, second for the motion. All those, in, is there any other questions or discussion before we vote? All right, if none, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? All right, motion carried. Thank you so much. All right, we'll move on to the agenda. Next slide, please, which is the president's report. All right, so as mentioned, I just wanted to acknowledge um, that this month being November, is uh, recognized nationally as Native American Heritage Month. And um, so I just wanna give a little bit of a background of um, why we want to recognize this in honor of all of our um, Native American community and our, our ancestors and those who came before us and paved the way for us to be here today. Celebrating Native American Heritage Month involves taking the time to recognize the rich diversities of the cultures that existed in America before it became the world power it is today. There are over 576 tribes across Indian country, but most people are only capable of naming a few, and even fewer are represented in the media of the day. If you live in the Americas, Native American Heritage Month is a great opportunity to celebrate our rich cultural history and discover which tribes call the land you now live on home. At this time, I would like to acknowledge the lands of the Tahana Otham and the Waymay people upon which I am currently at. And I also want to recognize the Akmel and the uh, Peeposh people upon which our AIEA headquarters is stationed at there in Phoenix. Thank you for allowing us to be visitors upon your traditional and beautiful homelands. With that, um, it's always good to try and acknowledge the land base upon which um, wherever you're at and to acknowledge those people and to give homage to them for allowing us to be visitors upon their lands. And so I encourage you to try and do that um, wherever you're at and at every opportunity that just shows the respect that we have for each other as Native peoples. And um, I just wanted to explain that um, how I'm dressed today. We're actually doing one of our events with my school district and it's a traditional dress to impress day. And so I'm full blown, all decked out <laughs> in my Kiowa regalia. Yes, yay. <laughs> um, this is how our Kiowa women um, dress. And I just want to acknowledge and, and uh, acknowledge my 
people from back home, my Kiowa people. Um, again, I'm also Caddo and Pawnee, but today I'm dressed out as Kiowa. And so um, I just want to say welcome again for joining us. I can't say thank you enough for being here um, with us for the meeting. Uh, next on what I wanted to talk about, which isn't actually on this slide, but is our membership. Um, I do want to remind everybody that everybody's allowed to be a member of our AIA and our membership application is online on our website. It's a fillable application, simple one page application that you can uh, fill out and then submit back to us and we'll get you signed up for it. Um, currently right now we're still um, not credit card prepared just yet. We're working on it. We're working on it. But um, once we do get that, uh, we will definitely let our membership know. So right now we're currently accepting cash or checks. And um, I know there is a process as with uh, every financial institution that um, or financial department that uh, there's a process we have to go through. And so if you want to become a member, we have extended membership this year because of the pandemic that has taken place. Uh, we're actually extending our membership until October of next year. And usually membership goes from July 1st, um, I'm sorry, August 1st to July 31st of every year. Uh, but again, we're extending it for this year. So if you want to become a member, you still have time. You will still pretty much get your full year in of membership um, if you uh, apply and um, become a member right now. So it goes again until October 31st of next year. Um, with that, um, I wanted to bring up the Title VI. Uh, those of us who are with, um, who work with the Title VI grant program, um, I want you to know that part one is currently open. And so it's a very simple um, process right at the beginning until we get into the nitty gritty part of it where we have to do all of our statistics and our data and all that good numbering stuff that keeps us up and awake at night. Uh, but I just wanted to acknowledge that that is open right now. Um, we did receive um, a update. Let's see if I can find it. This is um, for those who do have the grant and work with the Title VI grant with your school districts. Um, the EASY is actually um, a system of how we work and, and upload our information and data into the system. The EASY system is um under review and they're currently taking comments public comments from everybody so if you work with that system computer system with your title six program there is a 30-day public public comment period and uh, they want your responses by december 7th so please keep that in mind um, this is a 30-day pu public comment period um, documentation um, they provide a link that has been sent out to those who have do do work with the Title VI grant, so please keep an eye on that. Um, it just states that applicants can view the list of changes for Easy Part One and Part Two. Um, proposed changes are intended to reduce the burden by streamlining the application content in a culturally culturally responsive manner. So if you work with Easy, you know all too well what they are talking about. <laughs> and so we are um, oh, there. They have a public comment period open to where. Um, we can provide our comments on um, how we can make it more streamlined and more user-friendly for those of us who actually work with that. Um, next, I wanted any questions about that? Okay. So next I wanted to talk about is um, actually our fiscal agent, which is the Intertribal Council of Arizona. Travis, feel free to jump in if you, you want to uh, share more about this. But the, Arizona, the Intertribal Council of Arizona and Intertribal Association of Arizona in partnership with the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona are hosting a virtual interactive town hall to bring together diverse stakeholders to examine the impact that COVID-19 is having on tribal communities in Arizona. So if you want to be a part of that, that is going to take place on Thursday, December 3rd. It's going to take place at 10 a.m. Um, there is a registration link, which I'll put in our chat box here in a second. Um, but again, this is a virtual town hall uh, stand, and it's um, standing together during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, Travis, do you want to elaborate a little bit more on that? Uh, not, not really. It's, uh, um, <clears throat> it's something that we started to, to col uh, collaborate with 
Blue Cross Blue Shield last year and it was well, um, well participated in and we wanted to continue the initiative by highlighting important um, health issues that are affecting our tribal communities. And um, we are, we're trying to get Dr. Fauci to do a, a welcome video, but um, because of the, the election and the politics around um, his position, uh, it was, they felt like it was probably inappropriate that he would uh, provide that welcome, but there is gonna be someone up from NIH that'll provide that welcome. And then also um, uh, Michael Wiyaki, who's the director of the Indian Health Service will also uh, address the audience as well. So yes, thanks for, um, for advertising or, or announcing that event. I think it's gonna be um, a, really, a really good event. I look forward to your participation. Um, Kimberly, could you put uh, information about that event in the chat box, please? I sure can, and I'm actually going to do that right now before. Oh, great. Thank you. I forget. So there's the information there. And um, again, if anybody would like for your announcements to be done, and if you can't make the meeting, just send them to our um, AIA Gmail or else directly to one of the officers. And this is during, the, during our meetings, we try and get information out because we want everybody to be um, engaged and participate because we can all use that assistance we, um, and encouragement and support from each other. And so um, we always emphasize ITCA because uh, we want to be, keep on their good side <laughs> as, our, as our fiscal agent. So can't thank them enough for helping us out and getting us through um, our reorganization and uh, helping us get settled on our own two feet. And so thank you, Travis. Um, lastly, I just want to make mention of the College Horizons. Um, if you're familiar with this because we work with a lot of K-12 students. College Horizons is a great fantastic program um, that I unfortunately did not hear about in high school um, or even um, by the time I got to college um, I felt I was too old because <laughs> I didn't go back until later in life but anyhow um, I just want to make mention that this year they are going or actually not this year but this coming year for their program in 2021 they are actually going virtual and uh, all virtual program or all 2021 programs will be free and remote. Um, there will be no tuition fees to participate. And so this is a great opportunity if you have students. Again, we'll send that information out. Applications won't be released until January. And I will actually put the um, link in there for everybody um, so that way you can share with your students. I put the link in the chat box. Um, again, this is a great program. Um, they intend to make the streamline, they intend to streamline the application process to make it easier to apply. Um, they have opportunities that you can sign up for their newsletters and uh, their flyer. And programs to be announced, um, they are actually still gathering what type of programs they're going to be providing. So um, I just want to mention that uh, let your students know that the College Horizons program will actually be online this year. And uh, we'll send more information out as it becomes available. And so um, we have a lot on our agenda, so I don't want to take up too much time. And that's all that I really wanted to highlight this morning. Are there any questions? All right. If there are none, then we can move on in the agenda to Treasurer's Report, and I am going to turn it over to Travis. Well, good morning, everyone again, and, and thanks for joining us. And I too wanted to extend my <clears throat> um, recognition of Native American Heritage Month. I don't think the president put out a proclamation on it this year, this year, unfortunately, but most presidents in the past have always put out a proclamation for Native American Heritage Month, but that doesn't mean that we don't that we don't get to do our own thing to acknowledge and appreciate the people and cultures of, of, of the indigenous people in, in the United States. So, um, uh, so I wanted to acknowledge that. Um, so, uh, let me pull it up for 
So we have two funds. Um, so uh, we have one where we have an account with Desert Financial. And for over the years, with through our youth conferences and parent conferences, we've actually been able to profit some of the funds. Um, and that's been really wonderful to be able to have that um, source of funds to support AIA activities. But also a couple of years ago, when AIA was discussing dissolving the organization, like Kim said, ITCA decided to serve as the um, fiscal agent. So um, we also have a budget uh, at ITCA. And so um, for the ITCA budget, we have a total uh, expenses of 46000 $624.32. There's been no money uh, expended in October. And so this is cumulative uh, expenses since, since I, ITCA became the fiscal agent. Um, we've also have generated some revenue uh, with a uh, conference, youth, uh, one youth conference and then membership fees. And then the, the um, some of the other activities AIA has sponsored. And that revenue is in the amount of $10,360.37, which leaves us a deficit of $36,263.95. But I uh, just wanted to assure you that ITCA um, is covering those expenses and uh, we don't need to necessarily worry about um, figuring out how to balance that out and um, we're happy to continue to serve as the fiscal agent for AIEA. I, and unfortunately I'm working from home and I don't have my the bank account information <laughs> for the desert financial um, so I, I can't report on the, the budget for desert financial um, but I can follow up with Jerry to um, include it in the minutes when I get a chance to go to the office but there should be have, there should have been no activity um, in the month of October for that account because uh, the last expenses that we incurred were um, the disbursement of the scholarships to the students. And I think we'll talk about that later. So I'll make sure to follow up with Jerry to make sure that the um, the Desert Financial um, account is included in the minutes for the next meeting. And that concludes my report. Travis, would, would, would we be safe to say that the Desert Financial and the minutes from October would be the same? Yes, a, yeah, so that's a good point. Yeah, it should be the same. Okay, thank you. Um, so the if you look at the minutes that um, were handed out or shared earlier, um, it does have the uh, bank information for Desert Financial of our checking and our savings. So our, our checking account, we have $984 and $86. And for our savings account, we have $42,586.18. So um, it's, it's all right there. And again, uh, we haven't had any transactions since that time. So thank you, Travis. Are there any questions? Okay, if there are none, um, I did want to make mention that um, the White House actually did <laughs> put out a proclamation. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> no. uh, but I did put that in the chat box, um, a, a link to the proclamation for, uh, for the White House for this year for, in honor of um, Native American Heritage Month. And I also put a link to the College Horizons flyer that would have more information of what I um, shared out earlier during my report. So, all right. If there's no other questions, then we can move on, on our, in our agenda. So um, this is where we uh, want to acknowledge and recognize our students um, that pro we provided scholarships to. Um, a special recognition every year we try and provide that to our students um, who have received, um, who are the recipients of our scholarship. And our scholarship we've revised over the past few years um, we have three different scholarships that we provide um, in each category. So there's nine scholarships that we provide all together. And uh, the first category is um, 
academic. So if you do really well in school, you have a high uh, grade point average and you just excel in everything and you're just absolutely amazing on top of that. Just kidding. But that that's an incentive. Uh, then you can apply for an academic scholarship. Um, the second scholarship we provide is the exemplary scholarship. Um, that's for students who may or may not quite meet that GPA or do um, okay, you know, at least a B or C student, A, B or C student, uh, but they also excel in other areas throughout the school, whether you're involved in um, student clubs or um, student council, student government, things of that nature, um, or even start your own Native American student club at your high school. Uh, and so those are the type of um, students that can apply for exemplary scholarship. The third category we have is our Make a Difference Scholarship. This is a special category that um, we created because we have so many of our Native students that are so talented um, with whether they're artists, whether through, through painting or drawings, uh, beadwork even, um, clothing regalia, um, any type of artistic ability that they have, um, that's where the Make a Difference Scholarship comes in. They may not quite make the grade, but that doesn't mean that we don't want to recognize those students as well. And so even if they're involved with their community, they provide volunteer um, opportunities to different um, organizations in their community or at their school. Um, we want to give recognition to those students. And so those are the three different categories that we have for our AIEA scholarships that we provide every year. And um, with those categories, there's three different levels. So we have our um, junior high, our high school, and then we have our college and graduate level. So in each of those um, each of those little levels get three different opportunities to apply. So as you can see, we have nine different scholarships that we offer and provide. Um, every year we put it out there and we would like your help and promoting that every year uh, because it's usually by word of mouth and by social media or by email, but not everybody. Um, listens or reads their email or has social media. And so we would like your help um, and helping us share that out when that time comes. And so for this year, for the year um, academic year 2020 and 21, we have selected our uh, scholarship recipients. And so at this time, I am going to actually turn it over to Jerry to provide um, some information for that. Sure, so for the scholarship recipient information, um, we do have these recipients right here for the 2020-2021 uh, student scholarships. So um, for this uh, ceremony, we had the students um, voluntarily, if they would like to um, share um, st statements about what they did um, um, to receive the scholarship, but then also um, if they wanted to share any gratitude um, statements for their for the donors and for those um, that um, you know helped create the scholarship. So the scholarship was created um, as you know, even though it's a smaller scholarship, sort of in the amount, we wanted to make sure that we included a lot of the different um types of students so not only those that make it in academics but also the exemplary scholarship and then the make a different scholarship uh, as kim stated she uh, we wanted to recognize those um those that may not have been recognized in their school or you know uh, by their community and we wanted to make sure that we recognize um all of those students and uh, we do have three uh, scholarships available per category um, so um, you can see here just by the name list um, um, some of the scholarships um, not all the scholarships were claimed meaning um, those that um, submitted their applications they didn't uh, some of them did not um, did not apply to a certain category, especially for the middle school and junior high uh, scholarship categories. We do have three, but unfortunately two, um, we did not receive 
um, applications to two of those categories. And then also for the high school scholarship category, um, we didn't receive one for one of those categories, which was the make a difference scholarship category uh, for the high school students. So, um, you know, the purpose of this recipient um, ceremony is to recognize these students for going above and beyond in their application process. We looked through their um, recommendation letters. We looked through their essays that they wrote themselves about um, resiliency, you know, what it means to be resilient, but also making sure to interview the, um, their community's elders as to what resiliency means to them, um, especially during this time of COVID. We wanted to see um, not only the students um, recognizing their resiliency, but also seeing how their resiliency and their elder or their grandparents' resiliencies uh, work together in being able to contribute to the students' successes. So it was really great to read about that. So um, in doing so, uh, we recognized these students that went above and beyond in um, applying to the scholarship. And then we do see their, um, their successes. Um, Kimberly, is there anything else that um, I'm missing? Um, if possible, I'd like those who were on the scholarship committee, if you want to say a few words in response to um, reviewing the applications and all the outstanding Native students that have applied uh, before we actually acknowledge. And uh, I would like to call um, each student name by name as we proceed. But at this time, I'm going to turn it over to anyone who is on the scholarship committee. Feel free to um, say a few words about the applicants and the students that are represented here. I'll go. Uh, thank you, President Kimberly uh, and Jerry and everybody on the committee for letting me be part of this. It's my favorite part of the year. Meeting people in person pre-COVID is the only comparable. When you read these applications, you find out what people believe in, what they dream of, what their plans are in their youth. And for an old guy, that reminds me of everything good about being young. We know how hard it is. And we know how tough it is to identify your roots and your people and retain that identity in the midst of a modern world. And so when we read your aspirations your hopes, it clarifies for us where we as a people together, specifically in Arizona, are headed, but for the First Nations and the, and the United States of America, and the world, and humanity, right? My thing has always been that for some reason, Native people have retained their identity. And as much as you guys might think, oh my God, we're losing our language and all this stuff. As a white guy, a self-identified white guy, sorry. Uh, I'm proud of it, but I'm also sorry that I have to say that anymore. But as one of those, right, <clears throat> who is Italian, Irish, German, and yet I don't retain that the same way that my Native friends do. And so every time I read young who wants to be somebody and who also takes on the challenge of retaining their humanity and their roots. I am in awe, I'm, I admire you, I celebrate you, I'm thrilled, and it reminds us of everything we can be as people. So for my part, this is the best part of my year. I love all of the applicants and all the people that took time to read these applications and I'm so proud of the winners. So those are my two cents. Thank you for asking. Yeah, Dave, this is Esther. Um, for all of our applicants, I would just like to say that all of you are doing a wonderful job um, at participating in your community and doing what you can um, during this time of COVID and taking all of those classes and participating at your school events and taking your personal time and volunteering for these additional items. We know 
it would be so much easier to just sit at home. Um, I just came from a training a second ago, right before this meeting, and they were talking about what we could do is we could just sit back and we can watch everything take place. However, within this time, you are stepping up and above the rest of your, your peers. Um, those additional classes, um, volunteering as president and in uh, positions of officers. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for doing this because you are our future. Um, and so we are going to also look up to you and come to you for advice as we move forward in how to strengthen and build that foundation of Native American education and future leaders. So you are our future leaders. And I just want to say it was so great reading all of your essays and, and transcripts and seeing what you're taking. Um, so continue, move forward. We will still continue to rise up and be here and support you within your indigenous education and um, growth. So this is all part of your growth, our middle school, junior hires, our high schools and our impressive, impressive college and university applicants. So congratulations to you all and thank you. Thank you committee for your kind and encouraging words to all of our students. Um, Jerry, did you wanna add anything more? Sure, so um, this year was my first year as the uh, scholarship organizer, and I've been with AIEA for the past four years. And one of the things I really appreciate is the resiliency of the students. Um, I've reviewed a lot of these applications year after year, and I've seen that those that did not initially get their scholarship uh, the first year that they applied, when they stuck with it, um, you know, somehow, some way, some of these scholars some of these applicants, they were um, awarded. So, you know, um, I see a lot of last names that I've seen, not only their, um, their siblings have got it, but also, you know, a lot of these middle schools, uh, middle schoolers that moved on to high schoolers and then um, the college and university students, you've seen um, these similar names just coming up uh, every single year. And I just, I just value that, you know, you continue to recognize this organization scholarship and continue to apply because, um, you know, scholarship applications are, um, they can be strenuous on the mind and on the body, but we just thank you so much, especially during this time of COVID that you continue to value your education, you continue um, to um, see the value in, you know, continuing to educate yourselves and just being the best that you can. So we just thank you. Thank you so much, committee. Um, I know I was on the committee so uh, for a couple of years. Um, unfortunately, this year I wasn't able to just due to uh, personal matters over the summer I experienced. But um, so I know all too well the time and effort it takes to put into reading every application. So I commend you uh, for our committee, our scholarship committee for taking the time to do that um, over the summertime at that. <laughs> so thank you so much for your dedication and uh, commitment to all of our Arizona Native students. So with that, um, I want to acknowledge our student um, scholarship recipients. And um, if you'll notice, I, it's not a, it, it, it's a typo on here. It is student, not student. <laughs> Um, my apologies for that. I was trying to get everything on there. <laughs> and I, uh, overlooked that until I just happened to see that listening to everybody speak. But um, I do want to commend all of our students who have applied to our scholarships. Um, as uh, our committee members have stated, uh, some of them, we've seen them uh, grow even in their writing and applications from the middle school to high school and into college. And so it's a, it's a tremendous feeling 
and a, a heartwarming feeling that you get just reading what each of these students do for their community, for their family, and to acknowledge of who they are and where they come from. And so it's very nice to see and encouraging to see these future Native leaders to uh, share that and their experience with us through these applications and through their essays. And this year was a little bit different. Um, we talked about resiliency, as Jerry had mentioned. And so it, it was really nice to review um, of what these students um, experienced and how they're dealing with that and, and how they're overcoming a lot of obstacles or challenges even. And so thank you again to everybody, all the students that applied and to those who um, were the uh, recipients of this year's scholarships. Um, we want to acknowledge you. We want to honor you. We want to thank you for continuing to be that voice, that student voice out there and for acknowledging where you come from and taking pride in who you are. So thank you for sharing your experience with us. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us because how you write, it, it gives us an insight of who you are and where you come from. And so we acknowledge that, we see you, we acknowledge you. So at this time, I'm going to read each um, of our, our names and give at least just a few seconds of silence just to give honor to each and every one who applied. So first we have is Hayden Connor, who was our middle school junior high, um, who applied and received the exemplary scholarship. So silent clap. Next we have Tyra, this is our high school recipient, um, Tyra Minicows, who received our academic scholarship. Congratulations, Tyra. Next we have is Angel Marquez, who received the Exemplary Scholarship. Congratulations, Angel. And Jerry, if you could really quick go to the next slide before we do our university college. Um, these are the students who sent in pictures. We were hoping to get a video um, of acknowledgement because uh, I know a lot of students are unable to join us for our meeting today and we want we wanted to provide that opportunity for them uh, to give a word of gratitude if they felt um, upon their heart to do so but of course a lot of students are very shy very humble and so um, these were the two students who um, acknowledged that they wanted to give a, a thanks of gratitude so if you see these are our high school um, scholarship recipients the first one is Tyra Minicows, who received the Academic Scholarship um, of Navajo Nation. And then we have Angel Marquez, um, who received the Exemplary Scholarship. And um, if you can go to the next slide, Jerry. And this is the video from Angel. It should be able to play. Uh-oh. Can you pull his video up, please? <laughs> Maybe by just going to the drive and pulling up his video. Bear with us, please. This is so important. We want to acknowledge our students. Okay, what well, doesn't want to cooperate with us today? <laughs> so, Maybe you can put the links in the chat. Like if you scroll down to get link, there you go. Okay, so Jerry put the link to the um, 
to his video, his thank you video in the group chat or in the chat box, if you're able to view that. Um, it's a it's a really nice message that he provided in uh, Thanksgiving thanks to uh, the Arizona Indian Education Association for um, allowing him to be one of the recipients this year. And uh, these are again, these are just so heartwarming to read their um, applications and how involved they are with the uh, community, with their school, um, with their tribe even. And so it's really great and, it, and it's encouraging to see that among so many of our young people. And so again, if you get a, if you have the opportunity, please, um, I welcome you to look at uh, Angel's video so that uh, he, you can hear the thing that he provided for us. And so Jerry, if you could go back to the previous, um, back to our slides and then to remaining student recipients, please. Okay, I think I got it. It started playing his oh. audio. Okay, okay. I think you have to be off a of mute, Jerry. I'm sorry, the volume's really low. We can't hear it. Yeah, is there a way we, you could turn it up or? Just like this one. And lastly, I would like to thank my community who has always been so supportive in whatever I do and is always pushing me to the best of my ability. Uh, thank you and Was everybody able to hear? Okay, one more time, Jerry. The volume was really low on that. Okay. Please. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Angel McKez. I'm a current sophomore at Coolidge High School, and I come from the Hillary Indian community. Um, first of all, I'd just say thank you for allowing me the opportunity to receive this award slash scholarship. Secondly, I would like to thank my parents who have always been supportive on my academic journey and has always pushed me to succeed. I would also like to thank my advisor, Mr. Curley, who's always been there for me and is always telling me opportunities just like this one. And lastly, I would like to thank my community, who's always been so supportive in whatever I do and is always pushing me to the best of my abilities. Uh, thank you and All right, and so um, I just wanted to acknowledge um, these students who took time to uh, submit their thank yous to us. And again, for those, we know that there's a lot of internet problems and then of course some are just really shy and very humble and that's just a part of who we are as a Native peoples. And so, um, Jerry, if we could go back to the scholarship recipient slide. I want to acknowledge our uh, college students. All right, and uh, continuing on, we have three college students that, that are recipients this year. The first is Sarah Chatter, who received the academic scholarship. So, yay. Second, we have Amanda Cheremaya, who received the exemplary scholarship. And lastly, we have Kante Zephyr, I hope I said that correctly, um, who received the Make a Difference Scholarship. So again, congratulations on behalf of the Arizona Indian Education Association to all of our student scholarship recipients for this academic school year of 2020-21. Uh, well deserved and we um, support you in every aspect that we can. And if you ever need assistance, please feel free to reach out to us. So congratulations, keep moving forward. And uh, remember your ancestors are always standing with you. Thank you.
All right, so we'll move on to the agenda. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Um, again, we just wanted to acknowledge our um, student um, recipients. Next on the agenda is our old business. And first item, we have our winter camp. And so I am going to turn it over to Jerry uh, to provide some updates. Yes, so uh, for our Protecting Our Land Winter Youth Leadership Camp, um, we usually have it during the summer, but because of COVID-19, uh, we thought it wouldn't be inappropriate to have um, the students attend um, a summer camp um, in person. And we usually have it at the uh, NAU um, campus. So instead, we decided to try to collaborate to do a virtual camp this year. And we decided um, the more um, appropriate dates would be December 28th and 29th. That's Monday and Tuesday. Um, we thought this would be an appropriate date just because um, the students are going to be out of school. And then also it's in between Christmas Day and then New Year's. So we decided for December 28th and 29th, and they're going to be in, this is going to be an all day camp. So it's going to be uh, day one and day two. Day one's going to be um, facilitated by um, the Intertribal Council of Arizona and their invited presents, their presenters. And then also day two is going to be AIEA um, staff and then um, the invited presenters as well. So like I said, this is going to be a virtual meeting uh, held here on Zoom. And then also uh, for our registration fee, we do have um, the registration fee um, reduced. Um, usually we have $75 um, for each camper um, during our in-person camp. But this year we reduced it from $75 to $40 for non-AIEA um, members and then also um, $20 to AIEA members. So in order to get that registration reduced, uh, we would like um, um, the adults and the facilitators or the, um, um, the chaperones of the students to make sure to fill out their membership form for AIEA and then also um, when they sign up for the registration, um, just indicate uh, which district or which program or organization you are from, and then we will be able to uh, uh, indicate um, the um, AIEA membership. So we will be able to process that. And then um, currently we're still thinking about themes, but right now we are leaning towards the winter stories. So winter stories, um, and then also uh, focusing on um, um, rejuvenating our land. So our um, protecting our land camp is um, principally um, about teaching students how to advocate in protecting their tribal lands, their ancestral land. So we want to make sure that we always, always focus on the land. So for this year in uh, rejuvenating our land uh, via winter stories, we want to make sure in with our ITCA collaboration with our elders and college mentors, we want to look for camp staff that are um, that are um, um, leaning in that environmental realm, and then also um, having knowledge of the land, and then having those stories um, available for students to uh, uh, learn about, and then also have um, the activities um, surrounded by. Um, the focus of protecting the land. So um, right now for our camp staff, we do have our ITCA collaboration. And then also uh, we do, usually we have an elders in residence, meaning that for our summer camps, um, we have um, elders that stay in our camp as well, uh, doing our all day activities uh, with, the, uh, with the campers. And then along with our college mentors who are from colleges or universities here in Arizona that volunteer to um, help lead the students and then also facilitate the students' activities. Um, and then, you know, 
the three of our teams working together, uh, we want to make sure that the students, um, you know, not only stay on task, but also they, when they complete their activities, that we know that they've learned something. So every year we make sure that we uh, provide journals for the students. Uh, for this year, we are providing journals um, so that they can write about their experiences and then the journaling um, activities. And then also um, we do have materials that will be distributed to each camper. So how we're going to do that is we're going to have centralized locations. Uh, we're going to have one here in Phoenix um, and then also one in Tucson. And then we're going to establish one um, in the North um, Arizona area for students to either um, to help pick up their materials. So um, we do, we're going to have a bag of items um, for each camper and they're going to include um, an art kit and that's going to include their art supplies for um, helping create their um, their art projects. And then also um, we're going to have um, um, an elder do a presentation about um, about indigenous medicines that uh, she has a lot of knowledge about and how she uses that and then what they are used for. And then also um, we're going to um, call on college mentors to continue to facilitate um, the students, um, the student groups. So this year, usually um, during the summer camps, we have about, um, I would say maybe 25 to 28 students usually. Um, this year we decided to open it up to 50 available seats for the students and then also five available scholarships for the students. It's going, sorry, one second. Yes, but um, does anyone have any questions regarding the youth camp? One second, we check the chat box. Oh, I, I have a quick question, Jerry. Um, yes. I know that sometimes what we what we've done outside of like the field is sponsoring students, especially now that it's forty dollars. Would that be like a, a, a something that you all are considering if maybe, you know, especially since holidays are coming and people feel more giving, would that be a possibility for us to or get some of our, our friends and family to sponsor students? Definitely. So, um, Kim, uh, if you want to jump in on that, too, um, we are not opposed to having sponsorships uh, for our students. Sure, absolutely. Uh, because we know that a lot of our families and especially our Native American families have a uh, hardship at times with the economic hardships as far as um, what the effect that this pandemic pandemic has had upon their families, such as losing jobs or um, the financial hardship that they encounter. And so we welcome at any time, you know, sponsorship for our youth to attend any of our events. And um, we actually have a sponsorship letter that we are composing to get out. And Jerry, do we have that by chance that, um, Connie, if you want to just put your contact information in the chat box, then uh, we can send you that sponsorship letter and uh, we'll, we'll let everybody know about that. We can also send that out to the membership so that if uh, you feel it on your heart to be a giving person this year, <laughs> then uh, feel free to help sponsor our students for the summer camp. I'm sorry, our winter camp. And so, yes, yeah. We Mm -hmm. We do have that sponsorship letter available, and then we will be able to send it out. All right. Well, thank you, Jerry. Is there any questions about the camp and how that's going to be done? Or we actually have Travis on the line <laughs> as far as ITCA. Travis, do you want to provide a little bit of information about what you guys got planned for day one? <clears throat> Yeah, um, thanks for, um, I'll give a quick update. Um, I have a, a, a team member on, on staff, his name is Brian Davidson, who coordinates um, an EPA grant called the General Assistance Program for Tribes and that provides training and technical assistance around air quality and solid waste. And so um, through that grant, we, we wrote in as a deliverable to um, support this camp and so we're, we're happy to be able to support it um, this year as well. We um, 
what I kind of wanted to do was this idea of revitalizing our land was to talk about STEM careers and Native Americans in STEM careers because um, science is what's gonna, you know, is, is can contribute to the revitalization of our land. And we have a lot of Native uh, professionals out there that um, do some really good work around uh, land revitalization. So uh, a former staff, Shandine Key, um, she, she left ITCA to pursue her PhD in I think biochemistry um, was the one who was originally coordinating the recruitment of the Native Americans and STEM professionals. Um, she has since left, um, but she had recruited um, Otakie Conroy Ben, who has her PhD in chemistry, and she's doing um, wastewater epidemiology in tribal communities to understand what how the health of our people can be um, uh, measured using wastewater. And we're currently collaborating with her around a, a wastewater epidemiology program around drug use. And then we're also doing one around um, COVID-19. So we're pretty excited to um, have her on. Um, the other two, um, unfortunately, I think I lost contact with them. So we are, uh, probably starting to recruit some new um, professionals. And Agnes, I might give you an email later to see if you might be able to connect me with a native physician. I think that would be good um, to highlight the, the importance of health careers. And then um, we'll look for maybe two other uh, professionals that would be willing to participate uh, what we'd like to do is have them do a short biography of how they, of, of their personal background, why they became interested in, in Natives instead, and then also give a short, um, a short science presentation based on their expertise. So I th we thought that that would be really a, a nice touch to the, to, the, to the camp. And then we wanted to do include, you know, include elders and facilitators as well to, um, we wanted an elder perspective on re land revitalization because, um, you know, traditional knowledge is just as much should be valued as um, science knowledge and traditional ecological knowledge is, is almost more important than the modern science that is taught in uh, traditional universities. And then we wanted to make sure that there was an opportunity for our students to uh, reflect on, um, on, 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 on these careers. And so we wanted the facilitators, the college students to um, and guide a, a facilitated discussion after everything is done. So um, that's where we're at right now. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll probably uh, put it on my to-do list with um, Brian to start planning, uh, do some more planning around it. We uh, have, have a climate change grant through the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and we were planning on um, having a, con a statewide conference um, back in April, but because of the pandemic, it didn't happen. But we ordered some um, bamboo utensils and um, steel straws. They're coming like a little pouch and so uh, anyone who participates on, on day one will send them the bamboo straws and we'll do a little short lesson about the importance of recycling and not you know, trying to reduce your plastic use. Um, so pretty excited about what we're gonna, what we're gonna talk about and uh, hopefully um, it'll be a great success. Awesome, thank you, Travis. And um, Ag both Agnes and Marty said they're willing to provide assistance if you need any assistance for feathering uh, on what you guys want to do for that day one. So um, as you heard, um, we are very excited about this winter camp. This is one of my uh, dreams to see come to fruition is to see our winter camp because I love um, the storytelling time. And so I'm really looking forward to having our elders participate and to um, have our campfire talks about um, where they can share that uh, traditional knowledge with our students. And so, is there any other questions regarding this winter camp? 
or discussion? All right. If there is none, then we can move on to the next item on our agenda, which is our educators banquet for next year. Um, this is going to take place February 27, 2021. It's going to be a virtual celebration. Um, last year was our very first one we had um, back in uh, September, yes, September of last year. And it was a, it was a huge success. And we had um, all the educators that uh, were awarded. We had 10 awards that we provided to all of, um, to across the board that comes from AOM program directors to um, bus drivers, custodians, parents, um, the teachers. You know, we want to acknowledge all of those who have a part of educating and providing that assistance to all of our native students. And these are uh, persons that may not get that recognition uh, that they so deserve because of the work that they do day in and day out on a daily basis for our students. Um, whatever um, obstacles or challenges our Native students encounter, these people are the ones who help provide that encouragement and upliftment during these times to help them succeed academically in school and uh, in the school environment in general. And so this year we, we are providing 11 awards. Um, we're adding on the Resiliency Award uh, because of the pandemic that has encountered, there are so many teachers out there, so many um, educator uh, persons out there who have really stepped in and helped our students get, transition through this whole process. And so we wanted to acknowledge those persons as well. So we added the Resiliency Award for this coming year's um, celebration. And so I'm going to turn it over to again, once again to Jerry. Uh, she's kind of heading up the uh, planning and our committees for this. And so Jerry, if you want to uh, provide some insight into what we're going to be doing. Of course. So um, quickly inside the chat box, I did include the link to the AIEA website. Um, that's the way to um, download the AIEA 2021 Educators Award nomination packet. Um, so uh, we do have that up right now, and um, the, the deadlines are also on there as well. And um, we do have, since this is going to be a virtual celebration via Zoom, um, we did uh, include our keynote speakers already. Um, our keynote um, is going to be provided by um, Lenin Stant and she is the 2020 Arizona Teacher of the Year. And um, she agreed that she would uh, provide the keynote address. And then also we are organizing a raffle. And then like last year before, uh, we are going to have a silent auction. And um, right now we are in the process of gathering up our items. Um, the planning committee has volunteered to provide one item as well, um, along with um, the, um, those that um, attend the camp, um, they are um, allowed the option to donate their artwork. So last year, a lot of students donated their artwork from the art, uh, from the camp. And, um, you know, they did really well. Um, you know, a lot of paintings, a lot of sculptures and uh, jewelry. And, you know, it was really nice to see. And, um, the money that is made by the educator celebration uh, that goes towards a fund that uh, AIEA utilizes to help fund um, American Indian uh, teacher students or those that are in uh, the school of teachings here in Arizona and uh, we do that so we can help provide assistance for them to uh, take the, the credentialing exam for them to become teachers here in Arizona. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? All right, if there's no other questions, thank you, Jerry, for that update. Um, we are looking forward uh, to the celebration and very excited uh, to see 
um, all the applications that come in again. Again, that there's so many people out there who do so much for our Native students and the work that they do, um, we can't thank them enough and give them gratitude and appreciation for all the work that they provide. So if there's no other questions, then we'll move on in the agenda. So we come to new business and I wanted to provide information about our upcoming webinar series. Um, in the springtime, we started our education webinar series where we provided um, a few topics about tribal colleges and uh, provide, we invited different tribal colleges to be a part of these webinar sessions that provided information about um, admissions, about financial aid, about the programs that they provide for the native students uh, particularly. And uh, we had a great turnout with each session. And so we're going to be starting up our webinar series once again, starting today. Um, so after this meeting, we are going to be doing an introduction to the FAFSA, which is in collaboration with the Maricopa Community College, um, with the young lady from South Mountain Community College. So we invite you to participate and to stay online um, as we do our webinar session. It'll be from one to three. We're going to go through the um, excruciating uh, FAFSA process. And so those of you who have filled this out before know it. Um, there's a lot of detail that goes in, but once you fill it out, I promise it's very easy the next year uh, because everything is saved and it automatically switches over um, with the exception of a few updates or changes to your application. But we are going to have um, Delphine, she's with the South Mountain Community College, who's going to provide that webinar session this afternoon, again, starting from at one o'clock. And so again, I'm gonna turn it over to Jerry to provide a little bit more up, uh, information about the upcoming webinar series that we have planned. Yes, so for our webinar series, um, what we focus on is um, college planning. So for the series um, right now, the college planning series is about um, being able to outreach with those that are interested in providing more information about the college planning process. Because of COVID-19, um, we, we had to revert all of our meeting, our AIEA meetings into this virtual format. So when we did this, we thought we should start providing our professional development um, programs and then also develop a webinar series um, since we have this option um, to probably reach out to more students, more parents, more caring adults, and then more program and coordinators uh, here in Arizona to um, make sure that we get these resources out there. And uh, to do this, um, we decided to do a webinar series, but what we needed, first of all, was a call for members. So we're gonna be generating an official webinar committee. So right now our committee, um, we are just uh, month by month, just um, creating a webinar um, focused on our college planning series about, okay, so what, uh, what should we move on to now that, um, you know, the, um, the webinars that we made before during the spring and the summer, um, they were focused on colleges and universities and being able to introduce those, but also uh, scholarships, the scholarship programs for uh, Navajo, Tana Atham, Pascoyaki, they were all invited and um, we wanted to see uh, what their deadlines and what their scholarship programs looked like. During the, during the time of COVID. Um, so now what we're focusing on is um, we wanted to not only do this webinar committee, which was um, in general um, three or four people that came together trying to plan these webinars, um, but unfortunately some people had to pull out because of all their responsibilities. And now um, we need this call for members um, so we can do uh, we can uh, connect with more presenters as our webinar series goes on. So we usually try to do bi-monthly and weekly planning meetings um, to sort of um, put our webinar together. And we usually use this general format, as you can see here on the screen, and then also discuss ideas for upcoming webinars, what, we, what information we want to include, and then also how many uh, presenters we want to include. Uh, usually we have multiple presenters and then also we do uh, create and edit and review the webinar presentation together. Uh, we use the shared Google Drive to help 
put together the presentation. So, you know, night or day, we can edit it um, whenever we want to. And then also uh, we want to create a schedule since we do have a general idea of what webinars we want to do in the future. Um, in April, we will be um, organizing to release our 2021-2022 um, scholarship application. So leading up to the application release, we want to do uh, webinars um, uh, for, uh, for students uh, to prepare them to do uh, the AIEA application process. So um, for the uh, webinar schedule, we want to create the schedule so the students will know when um, we're going to do our um, how to write a statement, how to write an essay, but also how to ask for recommendation letters and do the follow through with that process. But then also, um, also um, submitting a resume or a CV as a student. So we want to make sure that we have those webinars uh, uh, scheduled and then also have our, our presenters ready. So when we do our webinars, um, um, that will always be prepared. And then also we are uh, creating and editing and reviewing uh, webinar flyers. So when we usually we have our webinars uh, right after our general AIEA meetings, um, just because we know that's more convenient. And then uh, we already have our um, present uh, attendees there uh, with our webinar. So um, this, for example, is the navigating predominantly uh, white institutions as native students. This was out in June and um, it will be up on our uh, YouTube channel. So we have a YouTube channel already that uh, posts our uh, webinars. And right now I believe we have about five. And uh, the first one was introducing us um, tribal scholarships. So we made sure to invite Navajo Nation. We invited uh, Pasquayaki and Tana Atham. And then also the other uh, two or three webinars, we had the um, um, introducing um, tribal and college, um, tribal colleges and universities. So we had uh, Fort Lewis on, we also had um, Tana Otham Community College was the first one. And then we had uh, Diné College and then um, you know, there was a lot of colleges that we invited uh, to talk about, um, you know, their programs and, you know, it was really good and our webinars usually go from one to two hours, um, usually longer because um, we have a lot of attendees, you know, asking questions uh, from the presenters and the um, coordinators themselves. So it was a really good um, opportunity to um, have that information there. And then also we did have our, recently we did our, um, what was it called? Um, uh, Native American tuition waivers. So that was an interesting one where we had um, to tuition waivers from Fort Lewis College to be defined. And then also having, um, Kim, was Dart it? That was yes. So we did have Dartmouth there um, to clarify what their tuition program is for Native American students there. So it was interesting to see. So um, those that want to um, uh, want to visit our um, AIEA YouTube channel, um, just make sure when you go up to the search bar, just type in American Indian, Arizona Indian Education Association, and then it will pop up right there. Uh, any questions so far? All right, thank you, Jerry. And I think there might be some more on the next slide, which oh, yes. actually shows the, um, yeah, just if you want, if you're interested in uh, participating and being on this webinar committee, we more than welcome you to be a part of this. And just uh, on a side note with, with the slide that you see here, the last session we had, which was navigating predominantly white institutions as native students, um, we've had some technical difficulties in trying to upload this, um, where it's just the audio and um, some of the slides aren't coming up correctly. So this has been a process that both Jerry and I have been working on um, since the summer, <laughs> and we're still uh, getting that together. So hopefully we'll get that up on our YouTube channel as soon as possible. So um, with that, are there any questions about 
um, what the webinar sessions are, or if you're interested in being on the committee, please reach out to Jerry and let her know. Her email's right there on the slide. Okay, if there is none, then we'll move on. And this is where at every meeting we've had, we've provided a time for all those who are on the call or during the meeting to provide any program updates that they wanna share about your uh, program, about your community, or if there are events that you would like to share uh, among the membership here. Um, again, if you have flyers or any upcoming events that you would like to share out to the larger um, education community, then please let just send that to our Gmail and or to one of the officers and we'll be sure to get that information out to our membership uh, because not all of our membership can always be on every call um, or every meeting and so we want to provide that information out to them as well and so at this time I'm going to open it up we have um, at, we have plenty of time and so if you want to provide any program updates just feel free to jump out and uh, share out Yeah, it's oh. Go ahead, Enrique. Okay, I'll be short and brief. Uh, I'm Enrique K. Salt. I work at the UA with the College of Education, specifically with the Indigenous Teacher Education Project, um, which is a two-year program. Uh, you will earn your bachelor's degree in elementary teaching with a focus on Indigenous education. We've had application workshops last month and we have one coming up in November, along with um, winter series storytelling. So if you'd like to hear more, um, you may go to our ITEP website, and there you will see updates. Or you may email me, and I may add you to our listserv. We are recruiting for fall 2019, and the purpose of our program is to increase Native American teachers serving within our tribal schools to teach our little kiddos. So there you go. Thank you. Hey, this is Esther. Um, I just want to let you all know that for this month and as many as we can, um, log into our Facebook page. It is MPS. Native American Education Program. We have live readings almost every night this month, except for the weekend. Um, we also have presentations um, that are being put on our Facebook page, and you guys are welcome to listen in and share as much as you would like. So we're trying to make it available to all of our community members and, and everyone who's interested. So please join us on Facebook. This evening, we have Jolana Krupa, who will be talking about her indigenous book called, um, hey, uh, what's it called? <laughs> um, how to be Miss, Becoming Miss Navajo. Miss Navajo, yes, Becoming Miss Navajo. Um, so she'll be doing a reading there and also a Q&A. So if you'd like to join us this evening at six o'clock, please do so. Yesterday evening, we had a live reading from um, someone else, and then we have teachers and students who are participating in this program. So please join us once again, MPS, Native American Education Program. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, this is Alex Benavides. I just wanted to let everyone know that we're currently um, recruiting our next cohort for a student's journey. And this is for Donna Otham Community College students. So if you know of any TOCC students that would be interested in this opportunity to kind of um, get acclimated to a university before they transfer, um, this program is meant for them to have an increase of sense of belonging at a four-year university. Um, so they will have a University of Arizona experience over the summer and then transition that into a internship in the fall of next year. So we are currently looking for students. We've been presenting in classrooms so far virtually, um, but this is kind of just a, a shout out to see, it. you know, if anyone knows of any TOCC students that would be interested in, in, the, in this opportunity. Um, I'll attach a flyer in the, in the chat, but I just want to kind of chime in on that. So thank you for uh, this opportunity.
Thank you. Anybody else? I'll just chime in also with a kind of a mental health thing. There are so many funny, funny Native American comics available <clears throat> throughout history uh, that have been recorded into YouTube or TikToks or wherever. And it's wonderful to just laugh. You know, we've all been under so much stress and there's so many things going on, but the, the truth of it is uh, there's some really funny people out there that make you feel better. And so I just want to encourage everybody to, to see those kind of people uh, as important too. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. Anybody else? So good afternoon, this is Agnes Atakai. Yes, this is Agnes. And so I wanted to mention that with our Indians into medicine program that we continue to do presentations for high school and community college students on health profession programs. So if you're interested, let me know. We can do a Zoom presentation and we can do some hands-on activities during the Zoom presentation. We also have a recorded session on YouTube that I will post in the chat. We will be developing a summer program as well. More information will come out regarding our uh, Native Health Professions summer program. In addition, I also wanted to uh, post information, uh, which I already did in the chat, on one of our student groups, the American Indian Student Initiatives. They will be presenting an environmental justice virtual seminar today from 3 to 4.30. And the topic they've chosen um, to facilitate is how environmental destruction harms culture, border wall construction on autumn land. And they will have uh, Ms. Vivian Juan Sanders, Mr. Verlin Jose and Lisa Palacios on to discuss um, the border wall. So I posted the flyer in the chat, so you, it's open to everybody to listen in and participate in the discussion. Thank you. Hello, Kim, this is Lynn-Ann. Um, our Betty Fairfax Youth Council is, um, will be hosting a virtual event today from three to five with um, Miss Indian Arizona as well, and that is open to everybody. I will be putting that on our PXU um, Native American Education Program Facebook page. Um, I just need to put the information up there, but um, that'll be happening today from three to five as well. Thank you, Lynn. Anybody else? All right. Um, if you notice, I, I just now realized on the actual agenda that was sent out to the membership, um, we did actually have one more agenda item <laughs> that I forgot to include on the slides. And that's just an update from the Office of Indian Education of um, with the council, our Indian Education Advisory Council. So I just wanted to provide a really very quick update um, of what's going on. Uh, we are currently undergoing uh, sessions of strategic planning. Um, the Office of Indian Education has been doing the strategic planning sessions since the summer. And um, we held our meeting, one of our strategic planning meetings yesterday. And there are four pillars that um, have been identified. And um, unfortunately, I don't have those right in front of me, but I'm going to call out on either Lenan or Melody, if you would like to share out about um, what the exciting things that are happening with the Office of Indian Education. I can just share really quickly um, kind of the process that has been um, happening as far as the OIE strategic planning, um, I guess, process. And up till now, um, it, or actually what's happening currently is that uh, information, feedback, input, um, question gathering, um, discussions are all happening right now with various stakeholders. Um, you know, in education in Arizona, um, Indian education, such as the Indian Education Advisory Council, um, parents and students, tribal education departments, um, also just tribes and tribal leadership, you know, um, teachers, educators, 
superintendent, you know, administration, principals. Um, so, so there's a, this gathering of information, input, feedback from various entities, um, and and inclusive of also post-secondary institutions, um, even nonprofit organizations that have vested interest in, you know, native youth, native students in Arizona. And so all of this information gathering is happening. Um, it has been happening the last couple of months and is going to be going into December where there will be a public comment um, time where, you know, just anybody in the community can also give input on the strategic plan uh, for OIE, which really has been uh, broken down into four different pillars um, that focus on you know, everything from resources to partnerships to um, educate, educator, um, like education prep programs, uh, you know, recruitment and retention of teachers. And so there's, so, so there is a focus on four pillars. There's also a look at the um, uh, mission and vision statements of the Office of Indian Education as well. And so anybody is welcome to, you know, give their input. There is an opportunity, I believe it is tomorrow, um, that is happening for parent and student input. And actually, um, Kim, I don't know if you have that, that link. I can put it in there. I just have to go find it in my email. But there is a link and an invitation for that. And maybe we can include that in the chat. So if you're interested, please share that um, also with, um, you know, any parents, students, and community members that you work with. Thank you, Melody, for putting the four pillars in the, uh, in the chat as well. And I'm happy to answer any questions. So again, right now, it's all just information gathering, feedback, feedback input. And then this will all be taken into consideration when the final um, kind of strategic plan is put together. And Melody, you're welcome to add anything I may have forgotten. Um, and, and again, I can answer any questions. Thank you. You didn't forget a thing. You were just fine. I did put in the chat that tomorrow is the student and parent strategic planning sessions. And we actually really need some students. Um, I think that um, there's an opportunity for, we have room for 50. And so we were kind of hoping for that number. When we did our strategic planning session with the tribal education departments um, this week, we did ask them to ask their student leaders. And so that's kind of where we were going because we know this, you know, Unity has leaders, a lot of your high schools have leaders. Um, so that's kind of who we're looking for. And honestly, you know, we didn't specify, but AIA, you know my general thought, which is as long as they're verbal, I'm happy to talk to them. So middle school, you know, I've met some of your great middle schoolers, middle schoolers, high schools, a very ver verbose sixth grader. They are all welcome because this is a really unique opportunity to actually help create policy for the state, which I think that that's something when people say, what did you do during the pandemic? For the student to be able to write, I help shape policy. That's pretty tremendous. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, ladies, so much. Um, if you'll look in the chat, there is the link to the student and parent um, strategic planning event that is happening tomorrow. I highly encourage um, all those who work with um, K through 12. K through 12 districts to please share out to your parents and your students. Um, we've been sharing that out among our district here, so I'm hoping that um, some of our students and parents will be able to participate tomorrow. Um, we can't emphasize enough um, that we do need their voice with this strategic planning because they are the ones who are directly facing these challenges within the educational environment. And so your voice is uh, very important in the direction that the Office of Indian Education will go. So thank you. Are there any other share outs that anybody would like to do before we come to a close? Hi, I just have one more share for next week, November 26th. Thursday at 7 p.m. We will be doing Indigenous readings. We have various poets who come to the platform, read their creative writings 
Um, <clears throat> and then our last reading, we also highlighted the LGBTQ community and had those readers. Um, you are all more than welcome to come. Beautiful words spoken. Um, and yeah, you're all welcome to that. I will share a flyer with Kimberly so that she can send that out to the listener. Thank you, Q. Anybody else? All righty. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for sharing um, your program updates. Uh, just very quickly with uh, what we're doing within our school district. Um, we actually have, as I mentioned earlier, at the beginning of the meeting that our district is recognizing um, this whole week as um, designating it as our Native American Heritage Awareness Week, where every day we have something a little bit different with a different theme. Um, we've had the walk your mocks because we weren't in school during the actual walk, uh, rock your mocks day, which is November 15th um, nationally. And so we had um, Walk Your Mocks, we had a Fry Bread 101 session, um, we've had Cultural Movie Night, and we had, um, I don't know how to say it in the Tahana Atham and the Pasquayaki languages, but it's um, the where little children get their education, but it's an educational day where we share out different facts of, within our district up on the homelands of the people that um, we are visitors upon, which is the Tahana Atham and the Pasquayaki people. And so we ask our students in our community to share out a few facts about those specific tribes and to help um, educate others who may not know or um, have maybe heard of uh, what, what they do. And so that's a little bit about what we're doing today. As I mentioned, is traditional dress to impress day. And so um, these are all copyrighted um, themes, by the way. So now I'm just kidding. But uh, you know, th this is just something we, we try and make it fun. We try and help encourage our parents and our students and our families to be engaged and to participate and to be proud of where they come from as the Native community. And so this is one way that we can provide that information. We've also shared out, um, if you're not aware, there's so many um, online films right now that are out uh, that are free. And uh, we'll be able to share those out with the community as well as a follow up to this meeting that if um, you want to view them, you have, I think, until November 30th to view these on for free online. And so they're native theme films or documentaries. And uh, a lot of them have to do with the Indian Child Welfare Act, um, the Indian boarding schools, and um, missing and murdered indigenous women um, issues. Um, a lot of the issues that are facing our native people, um, as well as education issues. And so, um, we encourage you to get out there and to uh, view these programs that are available to us and to help share and, and help educate others about our beautiful Native culture. And so um, we will, um, John, we will actually get those to um, a follow-up email to the membership. Um, I, I have a link to that, which is Vision Maker Media that are providing uh, free films right now and, and also under PBS. If you have a PBS, I don't know if you have to have an account. Um, I have one because I'm an educator and so it may be a little bit different, but I'll provide those links out and we'll send that out to the membership um, so that way we can um, be able to uh, get that information to everyone. So again, if uh, does anybody else have anything they would like to share out before we come to a close? All right. If there is none, then uh, our next meeting will be December 18th. Again, we do have our calendar that is on our website. We meet every third Friday of every month, unless otherwise indicated. Um, for the time being, we are meeting virtually, so uh, you can meet from the comfort of your home or from your workplace. And so, again, our next meeting will be December 18th at 11 o'clock. And so, if there's no other questions or discussion, um, I would like to call for a vote to adjourn. I'm sorry, a motion to adjourn? I have the motion to adjourn. So therefore, I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> have a great weekend. This is Esther. I second the motion. Awesome. We have a motion and a second on the floor. And the, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. <laughs> all right. Aye. aye. All right. All those opposed? All right, abstain. If there are none, the motion passed. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you next month. 
Um, also, as a reminder, we are starting our webinar session shortly right after this meeting. If you would like to stay on this call, then we'll go right into that at one o'clock. So have a great day, everybody. And don't forget to get out there and share our beautiful native culture, especially this month. Take care and stay well. Aho. Obaha.